Anyone who has ever approached a government agency just to see what they do and how they do it can tell you they didn't get very far. Government seems to be at least as secret as any corporation, if not more so. This government secrecy goes back well before terrorism was a general concern. Our public agencies are not so public when it comes to disclosing their own conduct, their finances, their inside operations, and their productivity. Well, it turns out, just like many people and organizations that like to be secret, they do have something to hide. It's called the CAFR. The CAFR is the name for the financial accounts of any public agency. It stands for Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And it is standard to all government agencies. Your courthouses have them, school districts have them, city, county, and state governments all have CAFRs. But up until recently, hardly anyone except government insiders have even heard of the CAFR. The hard numbers are in the CAFR. This is true reporting of all accounts, flows, and holdings. When media reports anything about public finance, this is what they should be talking about. But you may have noticed they only seem to talk about this thing called the budget. The budget is something very different. For government, the budget is not so much an accounting tool as a propaganda hallucination. A budget is a projection, a goal, a target. In accounting terms, the budget is referred to as inferior to the CAFR accounts. Suppose your county has a gazillion dollars in the CAFR, but they tell you they have no budget for dog catcher. Well, that's okay. That may be exactly right. They have a bunch of money, but they have budgeted nothing for dog catcher. This community has decided that stray dogs are not a problem, so fine. That has nothing to do with any shortage of funds. It's just a budget decision. They might tell you that they don't have the money for the dog catcher, but that would be just to appease the small minority who have lost their dogs. Now say they budget a million dollars for mosquito abatement. Now they've decided to go into those CAFR accounts and set aside a million bucks. The media tells us the county budgeted a million for mosquito abatement, but they don't tell us, they don't mention the gazillion dollars remaining in the CAFR accounts from which they are dispensing the million dollars. We sit here and believe that when they spend that million, there will be nothing left. They have us thinking that the budget is all there is. While we are duped into thinking government is broke, They are sitting on, in this case, nearly a gazillion dollars in many special off-budget accounts, and you don't see that unless you look at the CAFR. So now what happens if mosquito abatement goes over budget and costs two million? Well, since you and I don't know about the CAFR and that gazillion sitting in the accounts, the nightly news comes crying to us, telling us the county has gone over budget, run out of money, and they need to raise taxes or borrow to pay the extra million for the mosquito abatement. Remember, your media does not audit the CAFR. They just say whatever government says. So here's a real-world example of CAFR magic. In 2007, the county of Los Angeles had an operating budget of $17.5 billion. In 2007 was the beginning of a protracted recession. Government was constantly complaining about budget shortfalls, austerity, belt tightening, robbing Peter to pay Paul, and the necessity to raise taxes and extend the public debt. You would expect L.A. County's budgets over the next few years to be flat or to go down. In the five years between 2007 and 2012, L.A. County raised its operating budget from $17.5 billion to $25.8 billion. They're projected to spend 47% more in 2012 than 2007. In the middle of a recession, where did that money come from? Yes, they borrowed. Yes, they raised taxes, but not that much. They moved money around in the CAFR, and presto, they came up with $8 billion more per year out of thin air. From a money-skimming and laundering standpoint, the old organized crime families from the past would be green with envy at the size and scope of this operation. Compared to government, the private criminal class looks like a bunch of kids selling lemonade on the street corner. Of course, the government would arrest you if you did what they do, but... You know, they don't like the competition. 
So this business of borrowing and raising taxes makes no sense at all once we know about what those special funds are hiding in the CAFR. By not telling us about the CAFR, they can send the tax man to come and squeeze us for the extra million for the mosquito abatement. It's a big lie. They know it's a big lie, but it has worked 10,000 times in the past. If they can pretend to be broke and we will believe them, then why shouldn't they go ahead and rob us? They're so good at it by now, they deliberately underfund almost everything to make the budget look tight. And the media never questions the real finances. And they regularly come to us with their handout for unexpected cost overruns. How many times have we heard that? By now, when we hear them say unexpected, we should say, well, I'm expecting it. Why aren't you? In the private sector, bad planning causes embarrassing disasters. In government, bad planning is a tactic for raising revenue. So a naive and idealistic taxpayer would expect that all the money in the CAFR would be budgeted for some government program. Well, that would be silly. Why should they do that? You and I have no idea what's in the CAFR. They can let that money sit there and languish, and we will never know the difference. Our media and our schools have dumbed us down on all things finance, and government likes it that way by diverting our attention away to the petty and irrelevant issues. Our media, our schools, and our politicians create an intentional void and vacuum in the public mind. So we're thinking about anything except where the real money goes. If this sounds like I'm talking about a big plot to steal and misappropriate most of our public funds, I am. As soon as the revenues come in the door your government finance bureaucratic whiz kids skim off large chunks into secret funds and they keep that money off budget and hidden so they can invest it, compound it, reinvest it, and keep all those piles of cash in-house. Now, why would they want to do that? Of course, when a politician puts away big fat piles of money, he can use those millions or billions to back his buddies with investment capital. He can make his buddies rich or make new buddies by making them rich. And you know how that works. If I make you rich, I think some kind of kickback would be in order. Another reason for our officials and bureaucrats to pack away money is to protect their job security. When government agencies start running out of money, they start firing people. So every bureaucrat, every official, every agency has a major incentive to pack away as much secret money as possible and keep it in a nice, handy, liquid account. And this has been going on for a very long time. Government's income from just investments is now twice as much as revenue from taxes. Many people find that hard to believe. Let me say that again. Government revenue from investments is twice as much as revenue from taxes. We could stop paying taxes tomorrow and government would still have twice as much wealth and revenue than it needs to operate as it does today. And that secret stash grows bigger every day. Government is no longer a tax and spend operation. It is a tax and keep operation. Government revenues are constantly flowing into secret off-budget special funds, never to be seen again by the public. They are brilliant in coming up with names for these accounts that sound important and reasonable. There are rainy day funds, emergency funds, backup funds, set-aside funds, pension funds, discretionary funds. These are all just ways of saying, I am taking your money and I am not giving you anything in return. None of that money directly pays for any benefits, programs, or services for you and I. So we have to stop being fooled by this nonsense about this other thing, called the budget. If you put aside a household budget of $400, you're going to spend $400 a month for your groceries. And then one month, you need $450. Do you go and rob a gas station? No, you take $50 out of your bank account. Governments have bank accounts, and they have investment accounts, just like we do. But they keep that a secret. And to see that secret, you have to look in the CAFR. So when the media and our public officials start talking about having a budget crisis, really what we should, we should just laugh and say, so what? Change the budget. Don't bother me. Show me the CAFR. 
Let's get an independent audit of that CAFR. If they're going to pretend they don't have any money, I guess we have to point it out to them. So we need to stop talking about the budgets and start looking very closely at the CAFRs. Media needs to break its silence to this. The political parties need to get this into their platforms. Politicians need to stop playing stupid and treating us like children. We need to audit those CAFRs, every single one of them, and we need to demand that those funds be used to eliminate the crippling taxes that are accomplishing little more than creating those secret accounts. So where do they park that money? Government owns majority stakes in companies like Microsoft, Time Warner, Disney, and Exxon. Government owns over 70% of all the primary blue chip major U.S. corporations through investment in U.S. stock markets. You heard me right. 70% of the stocks of most of the big name major corporations in domestic and foreign stock market exchanges. So what is good for GM may not be good for you, but it certainly is good for that for-profit investor called government. So as a small investor, how do you compete with one large single investor that has swallowed 70% of the investment market? The wealth that you and I should be making by investing in the stock market has been taken in taxes and is being made by government with your money. And the government is not sharing that wealth back with you. Government is not serving you. It is eating your lunch. Since government gets rich along with corporations now, it's no longer particularly interested in passing any real onerous regulations for public benefit. Government now passes laws and international trade policies that enrich corporations in which government is invested and from which it profits. In the interest of profits, government has created some very bad foreign policy, like invading and making war in places where our corporations covet the resources, or by permitting American corporations to hire dirt-cheap foreign labor, or by opening trade with countries that have next to no human rights and environmental protections. Make money here, pollute over there. Government is now the profiteer. It is the exploiter. Government uses all its power, force, and lawmaking authority to make corporations wealthy, because that makes government wealthy. So among the many crimes here, government blew open the doors on global trade, exploitation, and plunder. The side effect of that global plunder is the destruction of America's domestic wealth, prosperity, and sovereignty. By forcing American workers to compete with cheap Asian labor, this two-headed monster of corporations and government on a global rampage is bringing the American standard of living down to something like the Chinese bicycle riding classes. Suddenly, a little protectionism doesn't sound too bad. Every dollar that sits in the backroom ledgers of the CAFR and goes into foreign investments is capital that in America creates no jobs, improves no standard of living, relieves no tax burdens, provides no government services or programs, and only serves to enrich and empower government insiders and financial elites. If the Kaffir fraud is not fixed, America has no future. Here are some links where you can find out more. The most important thing is that we must move forward on independent audits of our local and state agencies' CAFRs, and we must return that money to the taxpayers or redirect the wealth to the public benefit. Send messages to your media and your representatives that you don't care about the budget and you want to see the real accounts. You want to know what is in the CAFR. More than 10 years ago, Walter Burian discovered the CAFR fraud and has worked to organize a national movement to perform audits and redirect all this public wealth back to the public benefit. Burian believes that by opening up the CAFRs, taxes could simply be retired altogether. Find out more at his website at CAFR1.com. Clint Richardson is also an expert in the CAFR issue and has posted useful information and videos. Find him at thecorporationnation.com and realityblogger.wordpress.com. Note that the blogger has 1G. We need to get the word out on this 
And we need to tell our public officials that the CAFR money is ours, not theirs.